Hey guys, welcome back to the chat. Tonight I'm going to address some uh, comments, questions, messages, emails that I've received in the past couple of days uh, about the newest addition to the Clack Shack arsenal of diode lasers. And that would be more specifically the Acer P20 Plus, which I got a couple of days ago, been playing with it, getting it set up, doing some testing, uh, trying to get it to the point to where I'm comfortable with it and, you know, got everything working the way that I want it to work. So I've did a few modifications to uh, my workspace, got a few things made for it tool wise, and I'm just gonna kind of share what I've done with you and what I have found out so far and kind of where I stand as far as the ranking of this machine compared to everything else in the shack. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. All right, guys, first off, uh, let me start by saying, yes, I will be building an enclosure pretty soon for the Acer P20 Plus. All right, it has earned a spot in my shop to say the least. Uh, this machine has performed much better than I had thought. Uh, there are some things that I have found that I like about it better than some of my other machines. I'm not going to rank them just yet because it's still early. Anything can happen, but I'm going to be honest with you guys right now, the performance I'm getting 30 millimeters extra space in the workspace. Uh, the limit switches work really, really smooth. The software works smooth. I've had no issues at all with the way it runs. Uh, the air assist pump works, works great. Uh, I do think I might could get a little more horsepower out of this thing if I hooked it to shop air but it is definitely the air assist it comes with is definitely adequate to do most anything i've cut three quarter inch material with it i've cut six millimeter mdf i've cut 4.5 meter millimeter luon cut lots of that and it is performing really really well guys i'm actually able to run the machine faster and cut the same material at the same power setting than i can any of the other machines that i have uh, and get consistent cuts every time i haven't had a problem with consistency uh everything seems to be cutting great i mean i can't find anything bad really to say about the machine the only thing that i can say about it that is bad is it won't fit in my enclosures and that's not their fault it is a bigger machine it goes uh but just to show you guys where i'm at what i've managed to do today since i got in from work i do now have an acer uh p20 plus interchangeable jig kit that is fully functioning and up and going now i still got some of the other panels i've got to design i've got to to make and i've got to get it all packaged so before you guys ask it's not going to be in my etsy store today uh i'm still wanting to make sure it it, it it works every time every burn i want to make sure it's consistent i got to go through the file make sure there's no issues in there that i need to fix get that thing packed up and i'll have it in there hopefully by this weekend it'll be in the store uh but i've i've burned Two or three of them just testing to make sure. I made some minor adjustments just to make it a little more user friendly as far as the workspace goes uh, so that it doesn't get in the way of the laser and so that you don't accidentally cut it uh, once you put it in place and you're doing other jobs. Uh, that's two of the things that I have to, have to watch for when I'm making these things. So I'm gonna move you over to the machine. I've got another little tool that I have made. Um, and I have found that because Acer didn't give me a uh, a secondary that's that's the only downfall that i have found uh we'll go ahead and point those two things out the things that i think acer could improve upon uh, i love the machine but there's two things i think they could improve upon a little more compact with between the uh between the lens and the nozzle a little more clearance between the work material and uh, the laser head when it's in focus if i had just uh, just another quarter of an inch of clearance in there that would be great uh that does concern me with some materials such as leather and, and some of the more uh, likely to curl or, or bend materials. Some of you guys that do thinner materials as far as like plywood, uh, that's gonna be something you're gonna wanna watch out for. Uh, I haven't had an issue with any of my 4.5, uh, but you know, I would like to see that to make it, I think it would make it a lot more, uh, a lot more better for me anyway. Uh, the second thing, is the penetrating focus adjustment. I wish they'd incorporated that somehow, but they didn't, so I made my own. Uh, this is the, uh, 
little uh, focusing tool that they send you from the factory and I used the Mon port and went ahead and uh, engraved it so I don't get it confused with any of the other ones that I've got laying around because I got a bunch of these guys. So I went ahead and marked this one so that I know who it belongs to and measured it and decided that you know what that's uh that's some pretty thick material and in order to drop the focus down even more all i got to really do is build another one of these guys but make it thinner so that's what i did so i took some clear acrylic and i have made me another one that is about a millimeter thinner oh uh, this was uh i think four millimeters and this one's three millimeters and so it drops my focus down like maybe one more millimeter so when I'm really trying to do those deep digs, like with the uh, three quarter inch material and stuff like that in the future, if I'm doing that, I can use this and it'll give me about one millimeter more penetration into the material and it works out great. So if you've got some acrylic laying around that's three millimeters, uh, that might be something you want to experiment with and see if you like the results. Uh, I had a lot better results with it. This is the test burn test that I did. And as you can see between the two, uh, let me get my little pointer stick here, guys, so I can point at it. All right, this was uh, the original settings, original focus, using the little kick stand. This was my cut test, okay? This is the exact same cut test. I ran it, uh, but I ran this one using the three millimeter gap instead of the four millimeter gap. Got a little better penetration because this is six millimeter material. Uh, got a little better penetration and got a few more... Uh, clean cuts out of it uh, as you can see it stopped so i managed to get what's that six more six more advances uh, it was able to actually go four millimeters a second at 80 percent output and cut it in one pass uh, with the modified focus it could not do that over here so not a big thing i mean uh, four millimeters per second if, if you're going to run four millimeters per second why not just run 100 percent output so to me, that's not, as far as realism goes and turning out work products, I'm not going to run 80% when I can run 100% and be confident. So this, it's not a game changer, but it did help. Uh, I wanted to experiment and it did help. So doing the deep focus on this thin of a material, probably not something I'll ever do. I just went ahead and made that because it was cool to make and uh, doing some of the thicker stuff that I've been playing with, with the three quarter, the half inch, uh, three eighths material, stuff like that. It does make a... A little bit of a difference in the, the the smoothness of the cut and the number of passes it is required to make the cut so if you're interested a little experimentation i've been doing with the machine and i'm gonna move you over now and show you my latest creation all right guys there they are uh for this model of the interchangeable jig i did go ahead and make these guys a lot more robust uh, my original design was just that, guys. It was my original design. It needed some tweaking. Uh, I have experimented with round uh, connectors. The round connectors seem to have a little more slop in them once you get everything cut. So I went back to square, but I have in increased the size of them, increased the spacing so that these are a lot more sturdy, don't break as easy, and it makes them a little more material friendly because if you do have some plywood that's kind of weak, uh, with this added width on the teeth, uh, it's going to be a little stronger. But you can see here, I've got the uh, I've got the jig made. Uh, this is my squaring panel that's on here. Uh, it does just like the rest of my jigs do. Uh, it basically makes the machine and the jig kit one. Uh, it will not one will not move without the other. Uh, one more improvement that I did. Let me move this up out of the way. Uh, I went ahead and changed the design of the top here on the way that these connect. And in doing so, you can now move these from far left to far right. And they just lock, they can lock in. You can go all the way to this left side by moving over a few teeth, lock it in there, or you can bring it out toward the middle of the workspace and lock it in here towards the middle. So you got a lot more flexibility as far as where you move the uh, jig panels too, which uh, some folks had mentioned that they wouldn't mind seeing that. Now that I have modified the, uh, the connection, the only bad thing guys is if you already have one of my kits for another machine, uh, you will have to recut these to use them with this, with this kit. And I know that's an inconvenience, but I think the upgrades and the, the material being a little more robust, a little thicker, I think that's gonna make up for 
the trouble and the use of the materials. Uh, you can flip this, of course, if you wanted to go the other way. You can go all the way. You can actually go outside, and that was one reason I did this. If you're doing something really big, you could technically go outside the workspace and still use it to get you know, fairly level. Now, there's gonna be some movement in the material itself, so I'd be careful doing that. But as long as you're on a flat surface, uh, it would work pretty well. So you can go all the way from one side to the other simply by moving it over. I did put some numbers on the locking panel. That way, if you wanted to put some timing marks on here or put a number you know, on here when you burn those, you can do that as well to make it a little bit easier for keeping track of it uh, when you save your jig files. Uh, the, the biggest challenge that I had with a 16 by 16 sheet of material was making this, this is the extra large jig panel. Uh, it takes up a full sheet of 16 by 16 and there's very little scrap left over when you get done. Uh, same situation with this one. You can position this one, and I did have to modify this one after the fact, guys. Uh, this was, I cut these two teeth off because I had messed up in the design, but I went back since and corrected that. And uh, they, it now has this setup of teeth on that panel. But I didn't want to throw the panel away because it was a 16 by 16 piece of material. Uh, so you can do the same thing with this one. You can just take and you can slide it from one side to the other. You can move it over however you however you want to position it. So if, you're, if your workstation's over here or if your workstation's over here and you want it closer to one side or the other, it's easy enough to move. Uh, but I did, uh, like I said, did the squaring jig. I've got the large jig. But once, once I've burned three or four of these to make sure that the teeth all interchange and do what they're supposed to do, uh, it's just a simple process of creating the rest of the panels. Uh, and you can even take, if, if you want, you're comfortable with light burn, you can take this extra large panel and just create a square uh, once you get it and just chop it. You know, use the, the Boolean function to cut a piece of material off of it to make it whatever size that you want so you can customize these. Just because I make this one extra large, all you've really got to do with the proper application of uh, light burn and make it a Boolean is you just create another square around this one, select the back one first, select the second one next, and then just just cut it and it'll chop the bottom half of it off and make it the size that you want. So that's probably going to be the extent is I'm going to, I'm going to do a few sizes for those folks that aren't comfortable with light burn. But uh, for the most part, that's going to be uh, how that's going to wind up going out of here. Uh, and I did a little stumpy one here, just checking the teeth. When I first did the teeth, I used a piece of scrap and made this and uh, it can be used as a jig. I mean, this would be pretty handy for something small you know, pencils uh, or whatever. I could I could do 10 or 15 pencils at a time on this one if I want to make a jig out of it. So I didn't want to waste a full sheet of material just checking the uh, the teeth to make sure that they, they, they fit the way I wanted them to. But everything's working. Uh, the locking panel on this one is exceptionally tight because of the way they have the brackets going like L-shape on the legs. Uh, it basically embraces the entire bottom of the leg. I did leave enough slack that you can bring it up and down. Uh, you could even bring it up above the honeycomb uh, if you needed to. Once you get past those little rubber pieces on the bottom of it, the only downfall is if you bring it up this high, when you do go to take it off, you could pull the, the little rubber feet off the bottom of it. And I'll put a piece of material under here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Uh, I made it big enough that you could set the machine flat on the table. If your honeycomb was smaller, you could put the honeycomb under the edge of this, let this rest on it, and it's still, it's still very, very sturdy. You're gonna get a little more slop when you get up high like that because of the little rubber feet, but not much at all. So all in all, uh, I think this is gonna work for me as far as my jigs go, but I had to have this. I will be making my enclosure soon and Hopefully, uh, me and the eights are going to do some good things together. But All right, guys. So, so far, uh, for those of you that have been asking if this machine is uh, <laughs> moved up in the ranks, like I said, guys, it's still early, but so far it is looking very promising. Uh, I, I will put it to you this way. I've come closer to pulling the trigger on a frame extension for this machine than I have any of the other machines that I have because I do see 
uh, the usefulness, like I said, the power of it, the smoothness, the, just the mechanics, the way it's built. I, I can't find any, any, any major issues. Like I said, uh, the, the shroud clearance of the material, not crazy about it, but so far it hasn't given me any issues, haven't had any problems with it. So all in all, guys, uh, I'm like, this machine so far is a 10 out of 10. Now, I'm not going to call it just yet because I have got a lot of hours with my other machines, and I know that sometimes after a while you'll find those little things that, that kind of bug you about a machine. But so far it's doing a really good job, uh, and I'm going to continue testing it, continue working with it. I am going to have to get an enclosure before I can do any big jobs with it because I'm having to keep the shop door open uh, just to keep from choking myself to death with the smoke. Uh, and it will not fit in either one of my enclosures. So that's a, that's a problem that I plan to uh, fix in the upcoming week. And uh, hopefully we can, we can do a little more work with it once I get it enclosed. Uh, maybe do a lot more videos and all that. But for now, guys, it's working great. I've got the interchangeable jig kit set up for it. So that's, uh, that's progress. Uh, but if you're interested in the machine, guys, I, I will have a link down below for this machine. Uh, if you want to go check that out, if you haven't already purchased a machine, uh, like I said, this is it's so far, it is one of the better machines that I've ever used. Uh, the 20 watt output, I really, really like for the price tag of the machine compared to some of the competition. It's, uh, it's really good. Uh, I've been looking at some of the other things that they offer as far as the extension kit. Uh, they have a new chuck rotary that's coming out. Uh, so there's probably going to be some money spent. Uh, here at the shack because I can see to where I may want to go ahead and just bite the bullet and uh, get me the uh, extension kit for this machine because from what I'm hearing the 35 that they've got the extension kit is interchangeable between the two and I'm going to tell you now I am looking at uh, trying to get my hands on one of those 35 just to try it out and see how it does. Uh, the added workspace of this machine where it's 430 by 430 I like that because with some of the other machines even with a an upgraded module, you wind up losing workspace and you're only at 400 by 430. And so that kind of hurts. Uh, but with this machine, even with the 20 watt module on it, you're still at 430 by 430, which gives plenty of workspace for uh, just a square bodied machine. Now, if you want to make it into the longer bodied, then you move it up to like 850, which is ridiculously huge in my opinion. But I've got to make my mind up whether I'm going to get the extensions or not before I build the enclosure because I don't want to have to rebuild this thing. So it may, it, it may be a few days before I make that decision. But anyway, guys, just wanted to pass that on to you. A lot of you have been messaging me and, and commenting, asking questions how it was going with the machine. So I just want to give you guys an update. But that's where we're at. And until next time, be safe and have a good day.